Okay, set of ordered pairs is where we're going to start. These are four different ways that we can show relations. Open up the top left flap. Sets of ordered pairs are always written inside curly brackets. Each ordered pair is separated from the next with a comma. Do you see the, oh, the bracket here? Where's the second bracket? That means that everything in here is one set. Okay, and I want you to write the same ordered pairs as I'm using. I made them so they'll fit on a graph that's in here that we're gonna do in a minute. Okay, so that's our six set of ordered pairs. We're gonna see those in multiple ways as we keep going through this. Back right one. I blame you. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go over here to input output tables. We're gonna be putting these same ordered pairs in, but let's take a look first at what it says here. The input is always what variable? And the output is always So when we do this as a vertical, the x goes here and the y goes here. And as, when we do it as a horizontal, the x goes here and the y goes here. That means we're going to fill this in here with x, y and this down here with x, y. And we're gonna put these same ordered pairs that are over here so that we can look at the same set in different ways. Notice I have the same XY pairs over here now put into the table. It's the same information, it's just organized in a different way. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. And when we're finished with that, we're going to go graph these ordered pairs. That's what's in the bottom left quadrant of our organizer here. I feel like most people are caught up. Okay. Let's come down here. here. On this graph, we're going to use the X coordinate going to the left and right and the Y coordinate telling us how far up or down we go to graph these six ordered pairs onto this graph. We're gonna start with three comma two. I want us to label this one just to show that the points on the, the coordinate plane can be labeled with their coordinates. But we don't have to do that for all of them. I just wanted one example. What's my next ordered pair? Five, negative one, so it's gonna to go to the left five and down to negative one. Negative four and up three. Where is my, what? That is not the mistake I made last hour. Okay, let's go back, five, negative one. One, two, three, four, five, and negative one. Thanks, guys. <laughs> this one I did right, though, yes? Negative four, positive three. Where is my two zero going to end up on the X or Y axis? It's going to end up on the X. We're going to go to the right two, and it doesn't go up at all. 
negative 3, negative 1. And finally, 2, comma 5. I like that you caught my mistake early so I can fix it and not have to scrap the whole thing. All right. The last thing is the mapping diagram. We're going to take the same information that we've seen in these others and we're going to put them in these ovals. Who's seen this before? That's what I thought. It's a new idea. The one big difference is for the input and the output, if the number repeats itself, we only put it in the oval one time. So when I look here, I have 3, 5, negative 4, 2, negative 3, and 2. Do you see how 2 shows up two times as an x? When I list it down here, I'm only going to put it once. And these need to be in order either from least to greatest or greatest to least. I've seen people do it without that, but it gets really disorganized. Let's start with least to greatest. What's the smallest number in this, di this list? Negative 4. Okay. And then negative three. What's next? But we only put it in here once. And then three. And then five. We're going to do the same with the y values. We're going to list them from least to greatest. And in this case, the negative one repeats, but we're only going to put it into our, our mapping diagram one time. What's the smallest number over here? And then zero, three, and five. This is where I made my mistake, second period, so I'm moving to pencil. How do you think we make it clear what goes with what? We draw lines. Not just lines though, we're going to draw an arrow from the x to the y. So what I'm going to do to make sure I don't mess this up this time, I'm going to go from 3 to 2. And then the next ordered pair is 5, negative 1. Notice I'm pointing from the x to the y because the x is the input and the y is the output. So the, the arrow is saying where we end, where the output is. Does that make sense? Okay. Negative 4, comma 3. 2, 0. Negative 3, negative 1. And 2, 5. So now that you guys have made it, I want us to read the description because I think it doesn't make sense until you've seen what it's talking about. The left shape contains all of the inputs or x values without repeats. That means we only put the digit in there one time, even if it's used more than once. The right shape contains all of the outputs or y values without repeats. An arrow is drawn from each input value to its corresponding output value. So I want us to open this up and take a look. These five different ways of showing it, because we have two different input output tables here, they're all showing the exact same relation. Do they look the same? But can you see the relationship between them? Where the X's and Y's are? Okay, so with that, we're gonna do a quick glue into our notebook. First, I want you to put the relation, the um, Freyer model, next to where you put your tab. And then on the back of that page, and let me zoom out so you guys can see, because I want us to put a title on this page. We're going to put a title at the side that says, Ways to Represent Relations. So when you're gluing this, you want to glue it far enough to the right to give yourself space to do that writing. I'll get this glued and then I'll put this up here so you guys can see it when you finish your Freyer model. 